Welcome to Clean Tech TV. Uh, we're joined by David Mills, the founder of Osra, the um, solar thermal company. David, um, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, uh, Giles, and good to see you again. <laughs> Look, um, you're speaking um, at the Australian um, Solar Energy Society's conference next week. Um, what's your take on Australia's sort of solar status in the world as it is now? Certainly, there's some very interesting programs, uh, one might say controversial in the case of uh, New South Wales. But um, uh, all, altogether, I think uh, uh, programs such as, uh, say, the Colgan Creek program, uh, which uh, my former company has uh, succeeded in getting, and also the ANU program down in Wyala are, are very interesting in world terms. Uh, they, they're, they're doing something at a scale which other people aren't doing in those areas. Um, uh, I, I think uh, there's genuine interest in Australia in uh, solar, uh, and uh, it was uh, a little bit comforting, I would call it, to see uh, the Prime Minister and uh, Hillary Clinton make an a, a agreement about solar just the other day, uh, which uh, is for solar research. But uh, what we still lack are these uh, comprehensive uh, programs that are structural in nature, such as uh, the ones that are in Spain and Germany. Right. How do you think we can sort of leverage our position in Asia? Um, because that would seem to be our natural advantage, would it? I'm not really sure. Uh, it, it, that, that's a difficult one. We've got this uh, great powerhouse, China, uh, uh, starting to uh, go into every single renewable technology field and, uh, and trying to produce the, uh, the, the biggest uh, array or biggest uh, project in, in each case in the world. Uh, so uh, they, they, they can see very clearly the advantages for China in this and also in terms of uh, uh, leading in the technology. In some cases, they already do lead in the technology. And so uh, that was always our, our, our ace in the hole, that uh, we had very good technology in Australia. And, uh, of course, we still do, but... Uh, uh, too many of those projects, including our own, uh, went offshore uh, because we couldn't get uh, the investment. Incidentally, the reason we couldn't get the investment was because there was no uh, uh, secure uh, economic basis for going forward in society, as was provided in our case by California. Uh, uh, there wasn't the United States, it was California. And, uh, and uh, this was also the case for companies that uh, have gone to Europe and so forth. So uh, part, it, it was ultimately a policy problem. Uh, and, and, uh, but whether we are still in time for new technologies, whether there are sufficient of these technologies now to establish uh, a, a technical leadership is not clear. But certainly there will always be work to do. I mean, uh, uh, my, my former company, although it's based now in France, uh, used, we used to be based in California, um, uh, is active here. Uh, when they do a project, there would be many people employed in the uh, uh, installation of that project and the operation of that project over time. It will benefit the country. So uh, uh, it, the, the actual ownership of the technology is one issue, but it isn't all of the issue. I guess one of the major issues at the moment is really about the cost of solar. Um, where do you see solar costs going in the, um, in the medium to long term? Uh, of course, there's more than one solar technology, uh, uh, and but but PV and and solar thermal electricity and and of course uh, solar heating are all going down uh, 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 pretty rapidly. In fact, I've seen uh, much lower costs here in my three and a half years away in California than I than when I left. So uh, when you when you when you sort of dip out for a while and come back, you do see the progress. Uh, it, it is very real. Uh, and that's being caused by a number of things, uh, partly the recession and lowering costs, partly the vast production that's going on in China now uh, and Europe, uh, um, um, partly uh, new incentives that uh, have been uh, promulgated in Australia. Uh, uh, all of those things contribute. Uh, I just don't think yet the, the, uh, the, the final sort of uh, secure program that we need at, at a federal level is there uh, to complement state efforts. I don't think there's a coordinated whole yet in that, in that area. Now, you're making a presentation at the um, Solar Energy Conference. What's going to be the thrust of that, um, of that talk? Well, many of the things I've done over the last uh, few years, I can't even talk about. <laughs> they are the subject of research that's uh, still going and being developed in their top secret. So it gives, it's, it's always uh, given me a bit of a problem in terms of publication in this, uh, in this period, but... Uh, um, one of the things I was doing on my own was a study with others uh, 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 concerning the, uh, whether it was possible to power the United States solar from solar and wind. I, I gave an early paper a couple of years ago at the Solar Paces Conference 
showing that uh, solar seemed to be able to do most of the uh, most of the work in uh, the electricity grid and uh, also also ultimately the whole energy sector uh, on its own. But it only got to as I say the low 90s or 95 percent uh, coverage uh, for for reasons having to do with uh, you know it isn't it isn't there at night and therefore you have to have storage and when you have storage it isn't perfect uh, on a seasonal level and so forth. But it did pretty well, and uh, so that intrigued me. And I really, uh, the, the, the places where it was lacking was in uh, winter, of course, and when and at night. And uh, um, I, I wondered that, I, you know, people said that wind uh, was better at night and um, better in winter, of course. So uh, I decided it would be a good idea to do a continental study. And uh, this study that uh, we're finishing up now, and I'll be delivering the, the first paper on it, it, it's not been delivered elsewhere in the world, uh, is uh, on uh, running uh, the USA on an hour-by-hour -hour basis uh, fully from solar and wind. Uh, and that means we had to set up a huge load database uh, of heat and electricity, over uh, convert, convert all the transport to electricity, convert houses to heat pumps, all of those sorts of things, but do it with uh, the newest databases we could in, uh, in uh, the United States. And uh, that was, work's been going on for almost three years, actually. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, I think the results will just uh, blow away some people. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that work is still going on uh, because the databases were so huge and complex. Uh, uh, we're, we're constantly perfecting them, but uh, we, we do have enough uh, to start talking about it. And so, David, um, you're speaking at the conference, um, but uh, why else do you think it's a, um, it's a good reason for people to attend? Oh, I, I, I think it's a wonderful time in solar when uh, there are some incentives coming through, the, uh, going through to uh, talking as the theme of the conference is the flagships program, for example, and that's a that's going to bring solar to a whole new uh, size level in Australia and demonstrate to people that uh, very large PV and very large solar thermal are, are, are real and uh, very good employers and um, are big technologies and ready to go. So uh, um, that, that's an exciting time to be in solar. It's an exciting time to be at a solar conference. And uh, we can uh, look at that program in the context of the international programs, uh, which will be described by the international experts coming over too, and uh, to see if we think that program is really the best it can be or can it can be better.